everybody, it's Tessa. I am back after a month hiatus. My daughter got married on July 15th. Um, I believe my last video that I did was probably my Amazon FBA shipment on 621. So it has been just a little over a month. Today is August 1st, 2017. Um, had to take off that time. Like I said, my daughter did get married on the 15th of July. We were extremely busy. I actually have not done, did not do, um, an Amazon shipment for at least the last month. I think I did do one shipment the first week in July, but I didn't video it because I was so busy. I just had to get it in the mail and had to go do some errands and run some things. We did a lot of the wedding stuff ourselves, so stayed very, very busy. Um, now that that's all over, finally got my house put back together, um, got my eBay pile back behind me again because we did have it you know, stored away in another part of the house. Um, Finally getting back to work as of today. This will be my first full week trying to work. And what I wanted to talk about today, because I don't have an Amazon order ready to go yet, um, is actually some tips on getting your eBay on track if you are new or getting back on track if you have maybe um, you know fallen off or maybe you just haven't done as well and you're looking for some tips on how to really start amping up your business. So that's what I have. And I have four main tips for you today um, that we're going to talk about. And I'll also tell you how I'm implementing those things as well, because I am getting back into my eBay. And, <clears throat> and actually, as I had told you guys before, in April and May in a couple of my videos, um, I actually did better last summer than I have done this summer. Um, I actually had hit $1,000 in one month last summer and then just kind of let it die off just because of life and everything else. And I'm just really looking to scale this fairly quickly. Um, now that my daughter's wedding is finally behind us, she's moved to Florida. Um, my middle daughter actually moved out in June as well. And we're now down to just one child, my 17 year old son that's in the house. And of course he's going into a senior year in high school and we'll be going off to college next year. We are also looking to buy a house in January. So between a, a student in college, child in college, and buying a house, we do have a lot of expenses coming up. And now that the wedding is behind us, now I can start focusing back on business. Um, and of course, there's always going to be things in life that are going to get in the way. But I really want to try and make this a habit so that I am working at least 40 to 50 hours a week. I'm really shooting for um, at least 45 in a week is really kind of my goal um, but it may not always be possible. And sometimes we want to take some time off for family. So it happens, but that's my goal. So that's where we are. And these are just some of the things that I've learned in the past because I have watched my eBay kind of wax and wane. And, um, like I said, it's, it's hit a thousand and then it's dropped back down and I've had a good month of several hundred dollars and then it's dropped back down. And so there are some things that I have found that work for me. And so that's what I'm going to give you. It's based on my experience, based on where I'm currently at, what has worked for me. And then I'm also going to update as I go and, <clears throat> and tell you guys what I'm learning. So, um, you know, maybe there'll be some things. If you're starting at the bottom, then they should definitely be some things that should get you to where you want to be. So the first thing that we want to talk about, and like I said, there'll be four main tips that I'm going to give today. The first one is to set goals. Goals are so important. It's kind of like if you're driving down the road, you need to know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, then you're going to be wandering around all over the place. So that's the thing about goals, having a goal, and it really helps to write it down, to have an actual goal written down on a piece of paper that you can look at every day, because then it keeps that focus for you. And then you know, otherwise you're going to forget what your goal was and you're going to move on to something else. Um, and especially with life, because it just kind of happens naturally in life. And I'm going to take the glasses off today because I'm seeing a lot of glare on the glasses. And I don't know about you guys, but that's kind of annoying to me. So at any rate, I'll just go ahead and take those off. Um, so goals are very, very important. And so in talking about goals, I think you really need to stop and think about what it is you want from your business, why you want your business, why you want to do this. And... You want to write it down. You need to have short-term and long-term goals. And sometimes it helps to actually just 
keep lists. I actually, I love lists. I'm definitely a list maker. Anybody that knows me will laugh at that comment because um, I love lists. And sometimes I go way overboard with lists. It's just <laughs> kind of the way that things work with me. But I find that having a list, even if it's just mundane, everyday things that I have on that list for the day, helps me to stay focused. And I have a tendency to be way more productive because I have that list sitting in front of me. And sometimes some things on my list will be major things that I really need to get done that are really, really important. And other things are just stupid little things that I know I'm going to do, but I put it on the list because it makes me feel good when I mark it off. So, you know, it, it, it's the list part is not so much import, as important as the actual goals are, but do what you need to do to motivate you. And I guess that's what I'm trying to, to get at here. Um, goals are very, very important in whatever form that they take. Um, if you need to do a dream board and put it on the wall and that's your main goal, that's the end game for everything, then that's great. Um, if you need to do both that and keep daily lists, then do that. I have seen some people on YouTube that talked about every single night before they quit for the day, they sit down and make a list of what they want to accomplish the next day. I think that's a great idea. And I've seen people that say they also make a list of what they what they accomplished for the day so that they have a, a record of that. That makes them feel good. That is also tends to be a motivator. So again, that's another idea. You may want to keep some type of a journal, a business journal that tells you what you did. It might help you in the end because you may be able to go back and look at it if something does go wrong. And you can see, well, where did I go wrong? What was I not doing, you know, the last month that I was doing before? And then suddenly that, you know, didn't work for me. So, um, you know, any type of list, goals, written, I, that stuff's going to be really, really, you know, help you, I think, and motivating you to get something done and keeping you focused. Um, the other part of goals is also to think about dates. And this is where the short term and long term thing comes in. Um, I think you can get very specific with your goals. So you can say, you know, my goal is within six months to be making $5,000 um, a month, net profit, you know, and and just setting, you know, some type of a of a goal, like some type of a metric that you can gauge your business or your improvement on. And that's kind of where I'm at right now is that I have figured out, okay, I like this business. I love doing the reselling, but I'm not a fan of the stuff that's collecting behind me. So I really have to start working on that. And so right now for this month, my goal is to really in the next couple, actually I should say probably a couple of months. It's going to take me a little while, but my main goal is to get through all of the stuff behind me. I want to process all of this. Um, maybe eventually I'll show you our actual eBay room, which where we have everything organized and um, cataloged basically into banker boxes so that we know where everything is when it sells. Um, and unfortunately I have 90% of my stuff in that room has already been listed where all my unlisted stuff is behind me. My husband, however, has a pile twice as big as this and it is also in that same room. And so it's becoming a hindrance for us to be able to get to our items that we have sold. So far he hasn't really lost anything, so that's good. He is organized enough to know where his items are, but my goal is to help him start processing through his stuff and um, get that room really organized. And it's a twofold reason. Number one is because we would like to be able to put money back into the business. Actually, I should say it's kind of a threefold, a threefold reason. Um, you know, one is we want money to put back into the business. Two is we want money to be able to buy a house in January. And we are trying to really hit debt and pay down some things. So, you know, we also want some extra money to be able to do that. But, you know, threefold is because I don't want to see the, the clutter anymore. Um, it just stresses me and it's going to make business easier. So um, that's the reason why I want to do those things. But um, <clears throat> so I have this morning sat down and wrote down all these goals wrote down some smaller things that I want to get done this specific to this week. You know, things like, um, well, why don't I just look at my list instead of trying to guess? Cause that's just silly. Um, my goal is to list a hundred items this week, uh, 20 items a day for five days, because I, my goal is to work five days a week. Um, I have an entire bin of clothes in back in, um, another spare room. And I have a Z rack that I recently pulled out of our garage. I've had it for years, but I just hadn't been using it. Um, and with my two daughters moving out, we, uh, we had some more space, two other bedrooms. So, um, 
I've decided that that room is going to be for clothes. That way I can keep the dogs away from it. That won't have an issue with dog hair and I'll only process those clothes in that room. That will help control some of that. So what I need to do right now though is to go through and get all of those clothes hung up. Um, they need to hang number one for breathing room. They need to hang so that they're, um, they will look better for pictures because the wrinkles and things will, will fall out. Um, so that's one of my goals for this week. Um, I also am going to move a lot of my husband's death pile or potential pile, as I told you, we actually tend to call it. Um, we're going to pull all that stuff out and so that it's actually within eyesight, because I do think that sometimes as resellers, when we bring in hauls, we have a tendency to put our items, um, you know, in a closet, we hide it away. Um, and when it's out of sight, you just tend to forget about it. So he and I had a whole conversation that we won't be really using the house for any gatherings for the next few months. It'll be probably, um, you know, at least November before we have another family gathering in the house. So we're going to move all of his stuff out of that room and start really trying to hit that room and getting organized. So our short-term goal for this week, or my short-term goal, is to move his stuff out into another area of the house. And then I also have a bunch of stuff in the garage that I need to go through. Some things are already listed on Facebook. Some things aren't. Things we've had at, at yard sales, everything should be marked and priced and decide what we're doing with that because I need to get the stuff out of our garage. Um, one of the areas... Um, of our house that we really have issues with tend to piling up from stuff that we, that especially my husband buys to resell is our garage. And um, we really want to be able to use it because if we decide to start buying wholesale, we may need to be putting pallets and things in the garage. And right now I couldn't even fit a pallet in the garage. So we're really, that's, that's a short term goal for me is to take care of the garage stuff, set up my husband's extra table, hang up all my clothes on my Z rack and list a hundred items this week. So those are my things. Um, and I actually didn't write this down here, but I also have a goal of um, going through a large number of my listings every single day and just kind of tweaking my listings because I haven't been active for the past month. My eBay has slowed way, way down. I actually have not sold anything in the last two days at all. And I only shipped out three things on um, Monday that were actually had sold late Friday and into Saturday. So um, a very slow weekend, even though technically I think the summer, summer slowdown has finally ended. So um, <clears throat> I do need to do some tweaking on listings. And that's probably going to be another video I'm going to um, have come up here very soon if I can figure out how to do a screenshot so that we can show you guys um, some things that you can do to help tweak those listings and, and really get some um, momentum on your sales. Um, but at any rate, so those are my short term goals. And my long, long term goals are, um, I don't think they really are, are quite as specific. Um, and that may change over time. And I think if I reevaluate at least once a week, if not every other day, maybe, um, then those goals, I'm going to tweak them a little bit and I'm going to change them based on what's coming up. Now I have a monthly goal currently. Um, actually I actually have a dry erase board up here that I keep my monthly sales on. And for May, I had a goal of $1,000 sales for the month. And I really thought that I would be able to hit that. And I ended up hitting 937 for the month. Now that's a combination, that's gross sales. So that's before any of our expenses or fees or shipping or anything like that. That is just gross sales. Um, but that figure is a combination of my eBay, my husband's eBay and our Amazon FBA account. So it's probably... Um, that's, that's a really low number. It really should be much higher considering the time that I'm putting into this business. So that's one of the things that I'm really wanting to see. I really want to start scaling the business. And for June, I set a goal of 1500. So basically increased my goal by 50, 50%. And I ended up hitting my goal. I hit, I, we hit with the three accounts, 1593 for the month. And I will say my husband only sold like $186 for the month. So that was 90% what I was doing. And that was between the Amazon FBA and my eBay account. And I think my eBay account alone was probably, I think it was nine something. I think it was right at a thousand. So it was very, very close to hitting my thousand dollars a month gross sales. Um, and the rest of it was all Amazon. And then for July, things dropped way off because like I said, at the, um, the end of June, I think my last video was the 21st of June. And then after that, I think we might have had one more Amazon account went out. And then that's pretty much it. So um, I really haven't listed anything. I think I listed one item that I had stopped because the picture was wrong. And so I had ended it in the middle of all the wedding stuff. 
and I realized the listing was wrong. Um, and I just relisted it last week when I had a moment and I listed a puzzle the other day. Um, but other than that, I really haven't listed anything. So, um, you know, obviously I'm not going to have a whole lot of sales, even though I do have 470 items. Um, your sales just have a tendency to drop off and all my listings now are at least 30 days old. They've all relisted, which means they drop down in the ranking with the eBay algorithms and they're not going to show up in the search the way that they were before. So that's the reason why I need to work on some of those tweaking. Um, but my sales dropped down and when I did my sales this morning, it came to $729 for the month of July. And that's combined with all three accounts. So, um, not a great number for the month. And I really want to get to the point where my eBay is still active enough so that I could take a month off and it not kill us. Um, you know, that, that you still have some money coming in, which I'm obviously, I still had some money coming in. I haven't, I made enough to cover fees and everything, but, um, there's still a profit there, but I'm not making what I really want to be. So, um, that's, you know, why I keep that board because it lets me know what we're doing. So, um, with those numbers in mind, what I decided to do was for August, um, instead of keeping the goal for July, which was 1800, I dropped back down to June's goal, which was 1500. Um, and hopefully for August, being I'm starting at the beginning of the month, I will be able to get my goal up to 1500 again. Um, especially with 470 listings. I think I should be able to do that. We still have quite a bit of inventory with Amazon that I've been watching. I have a partial order sitting here ready to go out. So probably by Friday, we'll have another Amazon order. Um, so I really feel like that's a doable goal. Um, it may be close just because looking at like, you know, May's, we didn't even hit a thousand between the three accounts, but I really think that if I work hard this month, that $1,500 is doable. So that's where I'm at. So a $1,500 gross sale goal for July between the three accounts that we are currently selling on. And then I, or excuse me, for August. And then I set a September at $1,800. Now I will reevaluate that at the end of the month. So at the end of the month, the $1,800 may come back down. It might, we might end up with another $1,500 goal for the month, or maybe I'll go up to $2,000 for the month. It just depends on where I'm at. So I reevaluate that. And I don't really do um, sales go goals for too far ahead. Um, though I might have a general goal, like I said, I may, I'd like to see $5,000 gross sales by the end of the year. And I might do that. Um, but very specific goals for each month, I tend to reevaluate because I think things change and sometimes it's smaller than you thought it was going to be, or your growth is bigger than you thought it was going to be. So, um, I think you can have very specific goals. I don't think there's anything wrong with having very specific goals dollar goals, depending on the metrics that you choose to gauge your business by. But um, just be ready to reevaluate those and be a little flexible when you get down to it. Um, because you want to make sure that your immediate goals, your short-term goals are attainable. Don't set yourself up for failure by saying, okay, by the end of, of um, August, I want to make $5,000. Well, that's not going to happen. You know, I've never even made over a thousand dollars on my one eBay account. I can't expect to make five thousand dollars by the end of this month. So be reasonable and make sure that the goals you're choosing are attainable, you know, and then be flexible in the long term goals. Hi, Lucy. Get down, sweetheart. Get down. Get down. <laughs> so um, that's pretty much everything that I had to say about goals. Um, and I was actually to telling you, you know, long term. Um, well, actually, I pretty much went over all of that, that, you know, um, long term, I want to arrange, organize and list everything that's in our eBay room that hasn't already been listed. And so in other words, we want to process our death piles. Um, and so that is a, a main long term goal. That's going to be my focus for the next couple months. And then a thousand dollar goal sale on my eBay alone. So that's one of my goals. And actually, as far as that goes, I really would like to see $1,000 um, sales in Amazon as well. And I think we did actually hit that one month last year as well, just like I did on my eBay. But um, I'm not real sure at this point. And um, I'd, I'd like to see that again. And I want to see it consistently. So when I say $1,000 goals in just my eBay, I don't just mean I want to hit it for one month and then I'm going to quit. I want to see it consistently that I can make $1,000 gross sales. Um, and I want to continue to see that business grow. 
So, you know, that's where we are. So that's my goals. And so that way you can hear exactly how I'm setting up my own. Um, on my short-term goal list, I also have a, like a daily list of things that I'm working on. And like I said, some of those things may be silly. Um, I think I have thank you notes from the wedding on there. Um, you know, remember to call the doctor's office and make an appointment. Like, you know, you can add a lot of other little things to your list, but having goals is going to keep you focused. So um, <clears throat> tip number two for getting back on track, getting yourself focused and um, scaling your business, you know, getting getting somewhere. And I think this these tips really honestly can probably go for almost anything. They could probably go for weight loss if that's what you were working on. They could go for, um, you know, getting your life organized. I don't think it really matters what it is. I think these goals would work. So um, but they definitely work for an eBay style business. Um, goal number one or uh, <laughs> tip number one was to set goals. And tip number two is to research. I think that people do not hold enough in stock in knowledge these days. And sometimes they, um, I don't know, I think people just take it for granted. We have knowledge at the tips of our fingertips these days. And there's so much information out there that you can find on any topic, but definitely on reselling. Um, Definitely pick up a book once in a while. There are books out there that will help you organize. There are books that will teach you how to be a good leader, how to be a good manager, how to hire the right people, how to be an entrepreneur. Um, there are accounting books. There are just so many different books that you could be reading. You could read a book on your specific area, on your niche that you're working on. So if your niche is baseball cards, go get a collector's baseball card book because then you're going to learn a lot about your baseball cards. So definitely pick up a book and read. There's just so much information out there and it can only help you in the long run. Um, the other thing is YouTube videos. And obviously if you're here and you're watching my YouTube, then you know that YouTube can be a great resource. But there are a ton of sellers out there that you can glean some information from. And some of them might not even be like huge sellers, but like a seller even like me who is you know, fairly new. I'm not a new per se seller, but I'm not necessarily, you know, um, a huge money maker. I'm not really what they call a full-time reseller. I'm not making full-time income at this point, but there, you know, there are some of us out here who are still going to have really good information. And I just keep a YouTube video pretty much running in the background most of the day when I'm working. So if I'm listing um, if I'm researching, if I'm taking pictures, whatever, I keep YouTube videos going and I really have learned a lot and you'll hear me, you know, make comments about certain things. Like I, I earlier talked about someone who said they made um, a list every night of the things they want to accomplish the next day. And that way they always had a goal. They always had goals for the next day. So that's something that I learned from a YouTube video and it just makes so much sense and it helps me to stay focused. So, um, I learned something from just about every person that I watch. So don't get stuck watching the same YouTube person over and over again. Um, I think you can definitely follow people and watch their videos when they come out. I love Lindy Glenn. She's one of my favorite YouTube people. Um, love to watch her videos. She's upbeat. She's happy. Um, she's funny. So, you know, and I definitely learn something from her, but I like to branch out once in a while. So um, and it's funny because I think for a while, like I didn't really watch the rock star flipper. Um, there was just something about his videos that just kind of turned me off. But recently I've kind of went back and listened to a few of them and I get a lot of good information from his videos. So don't be afraid to branch out a little bit and listen to some people that you wouldn't, um, ordinarily listen to. Um, I don't do all clothes. I'm in a completely different niche as far as that goes. But, you know, I, I do games and toys and things like that. I, though I do have some clothes. Um, but I've still learned something from, say, Tim K on the Bay. Um, or, like I said, Lindy Glenn, who's mostly clothes. Um, there's definitely people out there that you're going to learn from. And it doesn't, it just doesn't matter, you know, what their niche is. Um, just, you know, branch out a little bit and learn. And the other part of the research 
would be maybe get yourself a mentor. Find someone who is in the same business that you are, someone who is reselling or maybe someone that owns their own retail store or whatever. Just find someone that you can talk to about business. You can bounce some ideas off of. Um, a mentor would be a great way to, to glean information from someone and help you along the way because they're going to have insight that those of us who are still at the bottom and who are still kind of working our way up at the top are not going to have. So um, that would be another part of the research thing is to find a mentor. So that is um, tip number two. Um, the third tip that I have is actually to create a schedule. And I think it's really important to have a schedule so that you know what you're doing with your time because on days when I get up and I don't really have a schedule and I haven't really thought about what I'm doing with my day, I have a tendency to kind of flounder and I kind of wander around the house. I'm like, yeah, what do I need to get done today? And I just kind of, you know, wander around and I just, I'm not as productive as I should be. And so um, create a schedule for your day. So, and this is the thing that, that people who will tell you how to manage your time um, will tell you that you need to account for every hour. So write down every hour from the time that you wake up until the time you normally go to bed and write down what you typically do during that day and fill in, you know, the time you'd like to be doing. Now, if there are not enough hours to do what you want to do, so like if you want to spend five hours a day on your eBay uh, business, or your reselling business, and there's not enough hours, then look at your day and figure out, okay, what can I take out? So if you have two hours of TV in the evening, well, then maybe you need to get rid of the two hours of TV time. And that gives you two more hours of, you know, eBay. Um, you, you just, you really have to look at it and take out anything that's not important or is not a priority. And that way you can adjust your time and you can get in the hours that you want. And if it's something that you really, really want to do, odds are um, you're going to find the time to do it. So um, a schedule definitely is going to help you do that. And <clears throat> that's actually pretty much it for my tip number three. Um, my fourth tip is actually kind of um, elementary. It's kind of, you know, one of those things we should know as adults, but I think sometimes we still need to be told. And my fourth tip is to take care of yourself. Um, you know, the reselling business I have found, and I've heard people even say it, is that the reselling business can be lonely um, and it can be hard. And so many of us are running two jobs. So we have a full-time job and we work our eBay. Now, I'm not one of those people. My husband is, um, but I'm not. I am, I'm very, unless you count, of course, you know, housework and, and all that. Um, which I guess tech, it still counts, but I'm not getting paid for that. So I can adjust my time a little bit. And my kids are also older now. My, like I said, my son is 17, uh, almost 18. And um, my girls both have moved out now. So um, we have really, we have three people in this house and it's just not, there's not going to be as much mess because there's less people. Um, it's much easier to, um, you know, manage this household now. So I'm not doing as much work as I was before. So, you know, that's a good thing, but there are a lot of us that are, a lot of resellers that are definitely are, that are working 40, 50 hour jobs and coming home and still trying to put in 20 hours on eBay, trying to run a business. So, um, besides the fact that it can be lonely because you're sitting at home working on your stuff, um, it's also easy to get burnout. So, and I think burnout and the reselling business is very, very real. So I think the thing, the fourth tip that I'm giving you is to take care of yourself. Maybe make sure that you are taking one day a week or even if it's half a day a week. So maybe just Sunday afternoon to do something that you want to do. Take a bath, go read a book, go to the park, whatever you really want to do. Go for a bike ride or, you know, um, maybe take every day and go for a walk for 30 minutes. Whatever, um, you know, do what you need to do for you. Make sure that you're getting the sleep that you need. So you can't go on five hours sleep for very long and you're going to end up sick and then you're not going to be able to run your business and your business is going to suffer. So remember that going in that you can't sustain that type of activity and not take care of yourself. So make sure that you're getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep every night. Make sure that you're eating right. Three meals a day, you know, good meals, you're drinking your water, and get your exercise. So 
The fourth tip, while, like I said, it seems very elementary and most of us as adults should know it, um, I think it pays to remind us of these things that you need to take care of yourself. Um, and honestly, I think of all of these goals, if you really want to start a business and you really expect to be a successful entrepreneur and have a business that's going to support you and support your family, honestly, I think the fourth tip is probably the most important. So take care of yourself. Um, it's something that I have, it's taken me a long time to figure that out. And of course, my kids are grown now. Um, but I did not take care of myself when they were younger and I worked myself to the bone and just about into the ground and didn't take care of myself. And it wasn't until I realized that my health was really suffering and I realized how close I was to actually having a heart attack and dying that I realized I needed to take care of myself. And I started really focusing on getting the sleep that I needed on eating the way that I needed to eat to feel better. Um, and really started focusing on my body and, what it was telling me about my habits. And at that point, things started to change for me. And I also found that my mind became clear. So it's really, really important to do those things. And so at this point in my life, I feel better than I have felt in a very long time. And it's also helping me to, to run this business because now I feel like I can think clearly. I'm staying more focused. I have more energy to do what I need to do. Um, so that's, that's where I'm at. That's just my... Like I said, from my experience, these are the things that I recommend that you do. Now, I didn't intend to go for 30 minutes today, but relatively speaking, that's still a fairly short video. Um, again, those, those tips that I'm giving you today are number one, to set goals, number two, to research, number three, to make a schedule, and number four, to take care of yourself. So that is four tips on scaling your business or anything else that you really want to do. So, you know, four tips to losing weight, four tips to, you know, becoming a better person, to being happier, healthier, um, more content, whatever. It, it's really honestly like it, it works pretty much for just about anything. Start there. Start with your goals on doing some research in your area, setting a schedule, and then most importantly, take care of yourself. So that is today's video. Um, I'll be coming back to you soon with another one and then getting right back on track on Friday with our Amazon FBA order. So um, I hope you'll look forward to that and have a great week.